In this video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your, the role as the photographer or the videographer or the filmmaker, whatever the case may be, whatever your role might be in the image creation process. Um, I think even the word photographer, videographer, content creator, just the label around it uh, is a little bit irrelevant. Uh, the conversation around what your responsibility is to the talent, to the person in front of your camera, whether it be for a headshot, a corporate portrait, um, whether you're working with professional actors or models on a film set. Um, I think something that's often overlooked that isn't really discussed um, well, I haven't seen much of it, but effectively how to get the most out of your talent or the most out of the person that you are photographing or filming. And I think it really comes down to um, getting your subject to feel relaxed and comfortable enough in order for you to make or take that image. And there are things that you can do to put that person at ease. Often when people come into my studio, I don't um, sort of put them in front of the camera straight away, uh, offer them a glass of water, put your stuff down. Uh, did you find the place all right? A little bit of small talk. Um, sometimes what I like to do is welcome them in um, and then sort of do things like I'm setting up. So I'll say, okay, cool. I'll be with you in like a minute. I'm just finishing setting up. And what that does is sort of like let that person come into the space without the pressure of having to then straight away um, perform. So other things that I like to do, um, you know, especially when it comes to a portrait session, I think that is where you can really do a lot to um, disarm and uh, relax your subject to get the most out of it because our jobs as specifically portrait photographers would be to make that fantastic image that that person falls in love with and then raves about you to their friends and often it is things like their insecurities about something um, that they might be thinking about and you don't know what that is so it's good to I shoot tethered to the computer and I find that taking a few frames and then showing them what that looks like sort of um, helps to get a little bit of trust between you. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's not so bad. And then I say, okay, cool. Tell me what you don't like, what you do like. Some people say, oh, I don't like it when my ear sticks out or I feel like this is my better side or whatever it is. Um, so I think it's important to have those conversations. One thing that I do like to try and impart onto um, onto onto my subjects is that the reality is that no one cares about what you look like as much as you do and they don't care as much as you think they care which is actually extremely extremely liberating so you might think you have one big eye or a funny nose or crooked teeth or you don't like your smile or one ear is sticking out or both ears are sticking out all your insecurities are yours and truthfully no one really cares um, and why I say it's liberating is because it means that you can be your true authentic self without the fear of judgment because the people that are judging you we don't really have them in our lives and hopefully those are people that are not part of your day-to-day uh, -day existence I mean sure like at some point somebody's mother's gonna say oh you really cut your hair like that or you know but ultimately I think for the most part giving yourself that freedom and permission to be relaxed and to be comfortable on camera and to help your subjects get to that point is part of our responsibility as um, image makers of people so something that um, that can really help is breaking the fourth wall so what I'm doing right now um, you know in movies they're talking off camera and it's easy to hide behind lines and characterizations and all of that but specifically with a still image and a headshot which is very very intimate it is uh, intimidating and the idea of looking through the lens as opposed to looking at the camera um, can help transcend the moment because the final image 
the camera doesn't exist. It is merely the means by which the image is made. So when you look at the, the, uh, any picture or any movie, you don't see the behind the scenes. You see the final result. And ultimately, what we want to convey is, uh, well, I mean, I think for 90% of, of headshots and portraits is kind of like warm, open, happy, friendly, or if it's in a business context, it is approachable confidence. Um, because we know the most attractive quality in a human being is confidence, charisma, um, and the most unattractive quality is neediness and insecurity. Part of the problem of uh, studio portraits specifically where you do have lights set up and a big lens and 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 is that in that space most people even professional models and actors can feel a little bit uncomfortable because the camera is almost like a magnifying glass on their um, on them and it makes them introspective and they start to think about the things that they don't like and that isn't how we are most people will say to me, you know, I was at a wedding, a function, an event, and somebody took a photo. I wasn't aware of the camera, and that is the picture that I love. I wish I could use that for all my professional work, for my LinkedIn CV, about page, and, and, and. So knowing that, it's not that people don't necessarily, uh, it's not that people don't like their pictures taken. It's just that when they are aware of the camera, and they feel that what I like to call shutter anxiety, waiting for that click, you, we can start to feel uncomfortable. Even me, um, you know, having sort of started my career in front of the camera, uh, I, I have that empathy. I know what that feels like when you're waiting for that, that and you sort of start, like, should I smile, should I smile, what do I do with my hands? All of those things, um, it's introspection, which we don't do in our day to day, because when we're, in our lives doing our thing, we don't think about what we look like. Well, I think for the most part, we don't think about what we look like. I'm, I'm sure certain people do. Um, but for most of us, we get dressed in the morning, we look in the mirror, and we go out on our day, and we don't give a second thought until we come home and go, oh, wow, you know, look, I mean, I think I need a shave, I probably need a haircut, I'm not looking so great. Um, so knowing that, you can really sort of tease out um, authentic reactions where people are not necessarily looking at the camera but they're looking through the lens. There's a really old expression which says make love to the camera which I think can work but I feel like it's it, if you go a little bit further than that it's like who is looking at the picture and what are you trying to convey. So you know if it is a actor's portrait um, like I say most of the time it's warm open happy friendly and that could be as easy as imagining and projecting the scene that you are looking at a beautiful sunset on a beach on a tropical island um, whatever it takes to get you there to get you to that place of serenity and not to think because then that imagery will conjure up um, those ideas for you and that expression of serene peacefulness will carbonate your expression because essentially all the stimulus from the environment. You see a, a cute little puppy interacting with a small child and we smile. So the feedback then sort of translates into emotion which is then shown on our faces. So if you want to come across as empathetic, maybe in a business context it's uh, problem solving. Somebody's coming to you, you are going to solve their problem. It is a problem that you have heard lots of times, so the solution is pretty easy. So it might be just as simple as the idea of looking at that person going, it's going to be okay, we've got the answer. Obviously without saying that, but if you sort of have that in your mind, that will translate onto your face and that would make for a good photo. Um, another very important thing is our jobs as the director of these images is to be able to pose people. What do you do with your hands? Give them something to do. Um, pockets is great. Folding hands can be great, but some people feel like it's negative body language. So another way to fold without folding is maybe just to grab under the elbows. Um, doesn't necessarily work for guys, but for girls, um, it certainly does feel less closed off. Um, and a lot of the time, a lot of the headshots were cropping here. 
So if you fold your arms, you can see that I'm getting a nice sort of shape to the shoulders. If I'm standing like uh, with my hands on my hips, um, kind of broadens out the shoulders and it might be better just to sort of keep them by your sides and pulling the elbows back. Some people are self-conscious about their arms and their hands. Um, so just things to think about and things to go into your own study about is to have uh, the answers for what I do with my hands. How do I stand? How do you direct people? How do you tell them to look left, look right? Because obviously it's, it's opposite to the camera. Um, but I think it is our responsibility as um, the directors of our own shoots to get the best out of our clients because then they will rave about us and come back for more. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know that is a lot of information. As I was saying it, um, I could probably break it up and maybe even do uh, a little video on posing, uh, specifically for um, either for headshots or for everyday people and not necessarily models, um, because I do think it's a really good tool set to have to be able to show people as opposed to tell people. Um, you know, maybe it's as simple as printing out a bunch of pictures and going, this is what I want, um, and then tweaking it and refining it. Because every different body type is going to need to be photographed differently. And you don't want to show someone a picture of themselves that isn't flattering. We want to take flattering pictures. So if you like this video, please, please subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment in the section below and we'll see you in the next video.